Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. I'm sitting in a 2012 Chevrolet Express van. This has the 4.8 V8 motor in it. I guess I'm feeling a little bit lonely today, so I wanted to uh, invite you guys on my journey to figuring out what is wrong with this truck. So anyways, uh, they're complaining that the uh, engine has a misfire. They're saying that it's only misfiring on one bank. Uh, the mechanic already tried to put some coils in it. I don't know, I think he might have changed the injectors. Uh, he was doing something and came to the conclusion that the problem must be with the computer. They wanted to have me verify that. So the truck is here and uh, it's actually running fine right now. So I'm, I'm not really sure uh, when the misfire happens, if it's while we're driving, if it's under a load. Uh, I really don't know. I just got in it, I started it up. Um, so I'm gonna check for codes first. So I got the scan tool up here, I'm just using the Solus Pro. Um, I'm gonna go to the codes menu. Uh, first code that we see, uh, PO171, fuel system lean, bank one. Let's see, what, what else we have? Uh, PO201, an injector circuit code for an injector number one. Uh, we also have a PO203 for injector number three, PO205 for injector number five, and PO207 for injector number seven. I'm seeing a trend here. And then we have a PO300, which is a random misfire, and that's it. Okay, so um, here's what I'm thinking. Uh, this PO171 may or may not be because a problem with maybe the injectors. So maybe when the injectors are cutting out, uh, the O2 sensors may be reading it lean. Uh, or the other thing that I'm thinking about is that these injector circuit codes were probably set whenever the previous mechanic uh, was unplugging the injectors on that one bank to uh, try to isolate the misfire. So what I'm thinking is that these circuit codes were set by that by the other mechanic um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just clear these codes and I'm gonna take it for a drive and then I'm gonna see which codes pop back up do we have the link code popping back up or do we have these injector circuit codes popping back up uh, so let's go ahead and do that I'm just gonna clear it clear codes all right we are cleared We'll go back in the codes menu just to uh, verify no codes present so we're gonna go for a quick drive and then uh, we'll see what what comes back up all right guys so I've been driving this thing about about 15 minutes now and uh, it has not misfired yet uh, the truck seems to be running fine I think I'm gonna head back to the shop maybe take a quick lunch and then uh, I guess take it out for another drive right now everything's working fine uh, this is definitely an intermittent misfire. So I'm heading back to the shop right now and uh, I'll be taking it out for another drive. All right guys, so I actually took the van out for another drive and uh, I'm sorry I wasn't able to film it. I just was in a hurry, um, but I went ahead and took it out for another drive. And this time, as soon as I pulled out of the parking lot, the engine started misfiring like crazy. Um, the check engine light came back on and guess what? The fuel injector codes were back. So. I'm over here at the computer. I pulled up the wiring diagram. Um, I'm convinced that there's a problem with the wiring to these injectors because we have the same codes that are popping up um, for these injectors that are on bank one. So if you look up here, we have the row of all eight injectors and they're set up in banks. So on this side right here, we have uh, bank two, which is injectors four, two, six, and eight. And then on this side, we have bank one, which is injectors one three five and seven this is the bank that we're having a problem with these injectors are cutting out engines misfiring running really rough so this is where we need to concentrate all right so if you pay attention this is actually a really simple design each injector has two wires uh, but what you'll notice is that each injector shares the same pink wire right here this is the power feed and this is a shared power feed between all of the uh injectors on this one bank uh, so the way this circuit works is that a fuse from the fuse box supplies power and that power gets spliced off to these four injectors and then on the other end of the injector is the control wire. So this is where we're going to have the other wire that is uh, a different color. So each of these injectors has 
one wire that's a different color and that wire goes back to the engine computer and that's where the engine computer grounds that circuit in order to fire that fuel injector so the problem that i believe we're having is more than likely on the power feed side of the circuit because this is affecting all of the injectors on this one bank let's go ahead and trace this back all right eight through eleven here we'll go to the next page All right, so if we follow this up, you're gonna see that it's coming from this fuse right here. So it says ignition fuse. Um, now, we also have the other fuse that feeds the, the other bank, which is bank two, but we don't have a problem over here. We're concentrated on this bank one. So we could have a problem to where we have a short circuit somewhere in this, uh, somewhere in this leg of the circuit uh, or we could have a problem inside of the fuse box. All right, so here we are under the hood. The fuse box is located down in here. And uh, immediately I see something that I don't like. And you can see there's a lot of oil uh, kind of staining the box. Uh, it's actually coming from this power steering reservoir. If you look, it's covered in oil. I'm not really sure what's happened. Um, now it does have fluid inside of it. So if I go ahead and open this thing up, and you can see that it's got plenty of fluid in there. But anyways, going back down to the fuse box, I'm gonna go ahead and take the lid off and see if we can't locate our fuse. Okay, there's the lid. It's got the labels on it. And then the other piece actually fell down in there. Let me get it. All right, so we got the covers off. Uh, I've already located fuse, fuse number 65, which is this yellow 20 amp fuse over here in the corner. Uh, the covers actually did a pretty good job of sealing the uh, oil away from the fuse box. So the fuse box looks pretty dry, um, but we're gonna go ahead and test this fuse. I'm just gonna use my test light. There's one side. There's the other side. All right, the fuse looks good. All right, guys, so just to show you what I got set up, uh, I've removed the uh, little dog house in the center, and uh, that gives me quick access to the uh, injectors. And what I went ahead and did is I hooked up both channels on the number seven injector, uh, one on the power feed side and the other on the control side. So I'm gonna send one of my guys to go drive this thing. Let's see what we find out. Hey guys, this is uh, Chris again from uh, Advanced Level Automotive. So right here we... <laughs> so right here we see, I don't know what the fuck I'm seeing, but... Did you shut the AC off or something? No. All right, so back under the hood, if you can see, I have uh, my probe tool on one of the uh, pink wires uh, coming out of the fuse box. This is the connector. I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect it, and uh, I'm gonna take it for another drive, and I wanna see if I'm losing power coming out of the box. So let's go take it for a drive. All right, guys, so uh, after uh, after being convinced that our problem was inside the fuse box, uh, I went ahead and removed it and disassembled it. Uh, this is the top cover, got the bottom cover right here. Uh, and this is what's inside. You can see uh, both sides to it. I had to remove all of the fuses uh, and the relays in order to remove the cover. Anyway, so uh, my fir first initial take uh, on this when I looked at it uh, I didn't really see anything that was obvious I mean it looks like there's some burning in these areas right here uh, but let me show you something that I, I found that's pretty interesting now when I opened it up I had seen this stuff in there and, and I thought maybe it was like uh, I don't know debris from trees or something so 
um, there was more of it on here and I, I kind of removed it but as I was as I was removing it I got a closer look at it and then uh, let me see if I can give you a shot of what I've found if you look really close let me get something to point this out with if you look really close at these little clusters let me see if I can get a, a good image these are actually clusters of ants and if you look in here there's quite a few of them these are all dead ants I don't know if they've been electrocuted uh, but you can see they're they're kind of stuffed in between here and if you look all along the board you're gonna see clusters of these ants there's another cluster of them right there there's more over here you can see right here there's just a bunch of these little ants and they're all dead I'm sorry if I can't focus in on it that well but let me see if I can electronically zoom in here there we go maybe you can see that a little bit better but these are clusters of ants now I don't know if ants can really cause a short circuit but if you look at this cluster right here on this terminal and uh, if you look at this this jumper that's going across right here uh, it, it seems to me that it is possible that if their exoskeleton can cause a short circuit that there might be a short circuit like in this area uh, I mean again I'm not a hundred percent sure but this is really what I see that's pretty obvious is that we had some type of infestation of ants uh, so again not seeing anything wrong with the connections or the uh, wiring uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to clean this off and put it back in the vehicle and then see if anything changes look at that cluster right there I mean give me your opinion guys do you guys really think that uh, ants can cause a short circuit right here I mean is it possible that those ants died from electrocution uh, interesting but anyways let's get this thing cleaned up uh, put it back together. I'll, I'll get it back in the vehicle and then we'll go from there All right guys, so it's actually been a couple days since uh, I put the fuse box back in um, We've been driving this truck uh, Pretty extensively to make sure that there was no issue with it and so far everything's been good check engine light has not come back on um, The truck drives just fine. There are no more misfires. I'm just about ready to deliver this truck back to the customer All right guys, so after I cleaned out the fuse box I got rid of all the ants that were on there. Um, I put it all back together, put it back in the vehicle, and I drove it pretty extensively. I, I had the truck for about two days, and uh, I drove it back and forth. I took it home. Uh, during the day, whenever I had a chance, I would take it for a drive, a good 10 or 15 minute drive, uh, and the truck ran fine, so it's not acting up. Uh, I will say this. Uh, I really couldn't take any chances with this truck because I wasn't really 100% sure if I had fixed it. I'm pretty sure I did, but the problem is, is that this is a work vehicle for a customer of mine and they really cannot have this truck fail on them. So uh, just as a backup, I went ahead and put a, a jumper from the bank two power feed over to the bank one, just as a backup. I put it there because uh, to be honest with you, um, I don't really see why they wire up the two different banks uh, separate, but I went ahead and jumped them together uh, just in case the problem was still there because I'm still not totally convinced that, you know, ants were causing all of this problem. I, I, I don't know, but I would really like your guys' opinion. I mean, 
do you think that these ants really could have caused uh, this type of problem to happen? Or is it just coincidence that when I clean up the board and put it all back together, the truck runs fine? Anyways, guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it, or I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, you can always comment down below. I really want to know what you guys think. I want to know, have you ever seen anything like this? Have you run into anything like this before? Uh, you probably have. Maybe somebody out there has more experience with this type of problem. Um, but anyways, thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.